Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be medics, working cooperatively together to try to save and treat patients in this real-time game. See, we're on a spaceship and there's been some people injured and we need to get them better. Today we're looking at Flatline, a Fuse Aftershock game from Renegade Game Studios. This is for one to five players, again a cooperative real-time game. This is going to be a rule school, basically my version of how to play. So we're going to teach you how to set up and play the game so that you can just skip the rule book and enjoy it right away. So let's get going. Flatline is a real-time cooperative game for one to five player, where you all play as medics working together, trying to treat all the patients on the spaceship before time runs out. Everyone will be rolling their dice once per round and talking about where to place them with only one minute to decide. You'll be treating patients with dice, sometimes one person, sometimes more than one, sometimes everybody will have to place dice on them. But you're also trying to take care of emergencies that are coming up, especially urgent ones, because they can cause you to lose the game if you ignore them for too long. Take care of some of those emergencies, and they become your ally by giving you special abilities. Ignore them and they start lining up on the red X, and if you get too many of them, you'll end up losing the game right away. Also, if you end up losing time throughout the rounds, you'll also end up losing the game. But you can even combat that by using recharging stations to give yourself some more time. And even when you treat patients, sometimes good things will happen, sometimes bad things will happen. So it has a lot to do with timing and the cooperative aspect of the game. During your initial setup, you'll need to attach the life support board to the center board using these two white plastic pieces that come with the game. You'll place the open white piece up through the center board there. Then you'll place the life support board on there. And then you will place the other white piece right there. So it spins just like that. You only have to do that the first time you play the game. You'll put the board together like a puzzle. You'll just see which spots go in with which spots, just like that. And then you'll place the center board in just like that. You'll take the emergency cards that look like this, shuffle them all up, and place them near the side of the board that have the numbers one through six. You'll also take these two white dice that have red numbers on them, those are the emergency dice, and you'll just place them right there. Next, you'll get all the patient cards. They're actually tiles. One side face up looks like this and face down looks like that. You will take all of them, shuffle them face down, and then you'll actually take a certain amount of these to make the stack for the game. Now, depending on the amount of players and the type of mission, whether you want training, standard, or expert, you can see this table to the right as to how many you actually shuffle and deal out into one stack, depending on the players and the difficulty. In this case, I'm playing with two players and we're doing a training mission, so I only have six of them. The rest of them can be removed and be put back in the box because you won't need them this game. You'll then take four of the face down patients. You'll put one in each of the four areas, just like this. You'll also make sure that the life support dial, the blue triangle, is pointing to the first space of any one of the patient cards. You'll then take two of these green power cubes and you'll put them right here. These are the two different recharging stations on the game board. Just near the red side of the board is the power meter. Notice they have green squares here. You're actually gonna find the power board to put right on top of that, and you'll find the board that has the right amount of players. This is for one or two players, so you'd find the board in the box that has the right amount of players. The green side is the be uh, beginner side. You'll wanna play with that during this tutorial. The red side is the expert. We don't recommend that at the beginning. You'll then place all the rest of the green power cubes, one for each of the squares. Next, you'll choose one player to be the chief medical officer. This is the one that is most experienced in gaming. Give them this player a tile. that They'll be the one to help you through the flow of the game. Each player is going to take six dice of the color of their choice. For example, here's six gray dice, six black dice, six purple dice. So each player will take all six of one color. They will leave one die of the color of their choice off to the side. And then everybody takes the seventh die of the color and take it out of the game as you won't need it. Unless you're playing with two players, in this case, the two players will each take seven dice of their color and they'll leave the eighth dice off to the side, meaning none of them go away in the box. And if you're playing solitaire, you do the same thing as the two player setup. And finally, you'll take these blank cleared tiles and you'll put them in a stack off the side of the board as well as the lockdown tiles. We'll talk more about these later. The goal of the game is to treat all of the patients that are face up at the beginning of the game and all of the ones that are face down at the beginning of the game and get all those treated before time runs out. Each round of flatline is broken up into several phases that the chief medical officer 
will help us go through left to right on the top, then here, and then left to right on the bottom. The first one here is called lose power. Now this simulates losing power on the spaceship that we're on. So each time this comes up, you'll take the farthest left power cube and you'll remove it from the game. And this will actually tell us how many emergency cards are going to come out, which is the next phase. So this shows us five. And this shows us again that second phase, which is adding emergencies. Since the power meter showed five emergencies, we're going to draw five emergencies and place them out. If the tab at the top is blue, you can see the bottom actually attaches here blue to blue, then you place it in the farthest left row here. If when pulling out an emergency, it has an orange tab, it gets added to the stat area, the orange side of the board. Notice the bottom of this orange, they line up to these lines and it's an orange tab. These are dire emergencies that need to be taken care of quickly or else they could possibly make you lose the game. More about that later. So after drawing five emergencies, one was in the orange area and four of them were in this blue area. Now, if there happen to be spaces here, let's say you drew three emergencies, you always go to the leftmost open space. So that would be the first one. Then we'd go to the next leftmost open space. And if all six are full, you start to the leftmost space above them. So we would put the third one up like here. Now let's say it looked like this. So we had to draw three emergencies. You'd start from the left on the bottom row and the first one would go here if it's a blue tab. We'd then go up here in this next space. Now all 12 are full and if we had to draw one more emergency, regardless as if it was a orange tab or a blue tab, the card would get removed from the game and into the box for the rest of the game. The next phase is rolling the emergency white dice. Once the dice are rolled, you'll place it on the corresponding number and then activate any emergencies that are above it from left to right. So this has a die two, we would activate this, which are typically some, most of the times bad, and then we would activate that. Now, if the dice were different, let's say it was a two and a four, well, we would activate this and then we don't have to activate anything. If they were both fours, great, nothing gets activated. If there were two threes, then you just activate this single card. If it was a three and a five, we would activate this one, then we would activate this one, then we would activate this one. We'll talk about what those different cards do and what the icons mean towards the end of the video, but let's keep moving along. The next phase is the planning phase, which is when we're gonna talk about what we're going to do. Now this phase has an unlimited time. Everyone's talking about what they think they're going to wanna do as a team this round. However, if you wanna place a timer, you can. The next phase is the countdown phase and it's one minute long. You'll use a timer for one minute and the round ends either at the end of one minute or when the last player places their last dice, whichever comes first. Now the one minute timer starts as soon as everyone gets ready to roll their dice. You roll your dice only once and then the one minute starts immediately and then you start talking and figure out where the dice are gonna go. There's three major things that you could possibly try to do here. One thing you can do together is try to clear emergencies and you're doing so by placing the right dice and the right number of dice on specific cards. And it could be with just one player or multiple players unless it says otherwise. This just needs two yellow stethoscopes so the black dice player places it here and the purple dice place it there. They're gonna be able to clear that at the end of the round. In any part of the board of the game, whenever a dice is placed, you can never pick it up. Once it's placed, it's done. Now, if you see this, this means every player because it's red and it has a bunch of different people there. So each player that's playing has to play a die of any type like that in order to clear this card where some cards say uh, they have to be equal. So in this case, like that. And those go for not only the blue emergencies, but remember the really dire orange emergencies as well. The other thing you can do is try to work on patience. Now these are the four that are face up on the board. I'm gonna uh, show you these off the board just so you can see a little bit more of the iconography all together. So anywhere you see a single person means only one player has to be the one to place everything that's there. So for example, one player would have to put both the white and the yellow here in order to complete this row. If you see multiple single people on the same line, this means that only one player can play one of them and a different single player has to play everything that's in between that line. If you see this orange one that has two people in focus and one out of focus, this means that you have to have at least two people, but it can be more. So let's say, for example, the black player goes like this, the gray player goes like that. That's at least two people and that's fine. 
And again, if you see the red with four different heads, this means every player has to play. And if they're small ever in these iconographies, this means that this player has to do this or this. So each player has to play either a white or a green in order to finish that line. The last of the three things that you're trying to do is finish recharging stations. There's two of them on the board and they each have six icons. Uh, the first three always have to be done regardless of the amount of players. If this says three plus, which means if you're playing with three or more players, this also has to get done in addition to the top row. Four plus players, these two plus these, and if five players, all of them have to get done in order to activate this recharging station. And it does not matter how many people do this, for example, in a three player game, this would have been activated at the end of the round, but it could just be one player, it does not matter. Now you do just roll once at the beginning of the phase, but you can do re-rolls. And how you do that is you take one of your dice and you place them in this area here, then you can re-roll any of the dice that you have not placed onto the board yet. So I'd re-roll these and let's say, ooh, I can't use either of these. I'll place this here, I'll re-roll this. And let's say, oh great, I can use that. Now you can do this all the way up. If you have one to three players, you can put up to five different dice here. And then up to four, if four players, you can place up to here and five players, you could just place up to here. So with more players, there's less rerolls that can happen, which helps scale the game. Now that phase does continue until either the one minute is over or all the dice are placed. Next, we're gonna go to the resolve phase. First, we're gonna resolve all of the emergency cards. So we're gonna first start with the orange stat area. You're gonna look at every card that's there. If it was not finished or done correctly, like in this case, nobody placed a die, this is going to flip over to the red side and then be placed into the red side of the board. And that gets placed just like this. The second one would go here, third and fourth. If you're playing with three to five players and the third one comes, the game ends. Also, if you're playing with one or two players and you get four of them, the game ends. That's one of the main ways you will lose the game. However, if you did it correctly, you would take the dice off and you would place it on the green side of the board. Notice this one is green. We actually would slide it right under like this so the green lines up. And this will give us an ability that we can trigger any time throughout the game. For example, this says all players can change one die to any side. We could all decide to do it. And then this card would then get discarded. And if this happens to already be filled and you need to add a card, you can simply discard any of the cards that you want in order to add the ones that you want, but you can never have more than four. Now for the blue emergency cards, if they're done, these dice would just be put off to the side for a moment, and this card would go to the discard pile, free up the slot. If it's, there's a card on top of one, this one would get finished and put in the discard pile, and this would just slide right down like that. Next, we're going to resolve the patient cards. Now, starting with the patient that has the blue diamond face in them, you will resolve this patient. To resolve the patient, you're gonna look at each line. If it fully is uh, completed per the rules, these dice can come off and you can actually put a clear tile on it just like this. This patient already has some clear tiles because in previous rounds, different lines were cleared. Now in this case, if these two dice are here, it was not finished, nothing happens. Both these dice come off and next round you have to start from scratch. But let's say this actually was completed and someone was able to, between these two or more people, were able to complete this. Well, this would then be completed, which means this entire patient has been treated. And then we look at what's going to happen with this patient. Now where this is tells us. So if it's on a green bottom, that's good. That means something good is going to happen. This means every player is going to gain a die for the next round. And that's why we put some, some away during the beginning of the game. If it was here, one player gets to gain a die and so on and so forth. We would then go clockwise through each of the patients and see if we're going to activate or treat them. Now, if they're treated and there's nothing there, then nothing happens. If it's green, something good happens. If it's red, something bad happens. Like for example, uh, essentially here, you would lose your ability to reroll for that round. And this is where some of the tokens come in. So essentially we put this lockdown token, meaning nobody can reroll at least just for this next round. And then after that round's over, you would be able to pull it up, assuming it didn't happen again. But let's say it was like this. You would actually be able to add a clear token to any line on any patient. Or let's say you had just treated this patient. You would actually have to take off one of those clears off any of the patients. Now these only activate when you completely heal that patient that round. Then we're gonna resolve both charging stations. We'll look at each of them. If it has been completed, you'll be able to take this power cube and I'll show what you do with it in just a moment. If it's almost completed but not, then nothing happens. You would place that green power cube in the furthest right empty square like this. Essentially, this gives you more time because once all of these have been lifted off, the one with the skull, then you immediately end the game and have lost. 
Also note these recharging stations can only be used once throughout the game. Once that cube's been used, you can never use this again. And the last phase of the round is turning the life support dial. Now, if you remember, we started this with the blue diamond on the first one of this patient. Simply, you just turn this so the blue diamond is on the number one of the next patient. And as you see, what happens is this round now, it's, it's at number two. After the next round, it will go number three, and after the next round, it will go number four. So it's just going from one, two, three, four on each patient each round. Now, the game will obviously either end in victory or defeat in this cooperative game, and you can lose in one of two ways. One is if the last green power cube at any point is removed, you automatically lose. Or if in a three to five player game, you have three cards on the red X side, you lose, or in a one to two player game, if all four cards are there. And you win if you did not run out of time as just shown. Now, if you haven't lost by one of those two ways I just shown and you're able to complete the last patient and treat it, you then win. But keep in mind that you start with four of them face up and you'll have a stack of face down ones. You must be able to put all those on the board and then treat all of them that are on the board as well. Now I've shown you and talked about most of the icons in the game, but let's do a little refresh on some of these emergency cards. This means one player has to lose two dice for that round. Here is every player gets one re-roll for free, where they can re-roll as many dice as they want. Uh, here is, a, you have to get rid of one of the green activated cards, uh, which obviously are helping you. And this is, you can discard one of the blue emergency cards. This one is, you can place one of those clear markers on any one of the patients. This is, you must take one off of one of the patients. And this is, you're gonna draw another emergency card. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into the game without having to read the rulebook and allowing you to enjoy the game faster. Now, if you have additional questions about the rules, I've placed the link in the description of this video, and that specific location will help you out because not only will I be able to answer your questions, but also so will the publishers, the designers, and the developers of the game. Thanks for watching.